up, y'all? Jesse Warden doing my P90X2 90-day review. That's right. I completed P90X2. Just some background, I've done P90X1 twice. I did core week for three weeks to help with my running. So I was doing core synergistics and yoga while I was focusing on running goals. And I finally decided to do P90X2 just to try something new. Some friends recommended it. And I also tried to do the vegan diet or vegetarian diet while doing it. So I thought I'd give you guys some background on it as someone who's done PNX1 a couple times. Uh, first, the negatives. Number one, there is not a lot of lifting. It is very core specific, very you know full body workout, a little bit of cardio. Um, at the end of it, you feel destroyed, which is great. But a lot of bodybuilders or people who focus on the lifting portions of PNX1 just don't like it. Yeah, another thing about the lifting too is that because of the expectations around some of the upper body and chest exercises, I still didn't meet that. I, I'm a guy who struggles with pull-ups. My lats, you know, my delts, all that stuff in the back is I really struggle with it. And a lot of the pull-up exercises are very advanced. So I, I had to do a significant amount of modifications, a significant amount of um, adjustments. I had to, you know, try and fail a lot, even with an extended, you know, phase two. So I think there's some expectations in the phase two exercises that I just didn't meet, and that's okay. You know, everyone's built differently. Everyone has different fitness goals and fitness levels. So that might just be unique to me, but just something to be aware of that a lot of the pull-up moves are very different, hard, and challenging. So that was uh, a little frustrating. Phase one was really strange. So PNX2, just like PNX1, they have three phases, but phase one was nothing but core. Had a lot of really fun core exercises. I think a lot of people who loved core synergistics in PNX1 really enjoyed that aspect of PNX2. For me, I felt really confused. I felt like we were doing the same muscle groups, just different areas per day. Maybe I'm not qualified enough to recognize what those muscle groups are, but during phase one, I mean, it was fun. It's just a whole month of core, nonstop, nothing else, no leg focus, no nothing. So very strange. I felt really confused <laughs> on where, where we're going. Uh, I didn't feel like I was on a path or something. Uh, stretching. So PNX2, from a high level, expects that you're experienced, expects that you're responsible, that you take the initiative for your own fitness uh, goals and health and fitness. So because of that, they have the assumption that you're going to do your own stretching. So they include stretching in the DVDs, uh, but it's more the focus is on foam rolling. So they're making the assumption that before and after you're going to do your own stretching outside of the predetermined hour-ish for the workouts. That was not something that I was expecting, and I'm, you know, someone who's gotten injured a lot and had two orthopedics uh, criticize me for actually skipping the X stretch in PNX one. Um, that was definitely something hard to swallow. I, I had to devote more time to stretching, and uh, foam rowing's, you know, helps a little bit with flexibility, but you know, core stretching is really where it's at. So that was a little frustrating. So that's the cons. That's that's the only frustrating things I had about P9X two. Pros, there's a lot of things I love. So number one, PAP upper and lower justify the DVD purchase. If you were bored and you were looking for something new, PAP upper and lower is where it's at. Unfortunately, you don't get to it until phase three, and because you get to choose how long each phase lasts, as well as when you inject a recovery week, that could be for a long time. I actually extended phase two to seven weeks because of an injury and because I, I constantly saw improvements. So you might not get to PAP upper and lower for a long time, but it's really fun. PAP lower, really for me, the lower. Upper's cool, but PAP lower really justified the entire experience for me. I really loved it. Um, I wish I had a way to do that for a maintenance uh, way because it's, it's the most fun exercise. Uh, shoulders and arms with Jason Chef. So Jeff, the whole point of phase two is where they do a lot of the things you're familiar with, right? Like arms and chest and legs and everything else, but they add challenges to it. And I felt like the shoulders and arms with Jason Chef was just the most fun exercise out of all of them. He's a goofball. I make Tony look serious. Uh, it was really fun, especially for something, some guy like me who has really, I don't have very good upper body strength. All my stuff's in my legs. And so it was, you know, something I, I constantly want to work on. So because I have to see this DVD every day, it was good to know that the, the one I see the most actually is one of the most entertaining. Plyo side was actually kind of fun. Um, the, a lot of the expectations of P9X2 is that they take plyo and make it even worse, right? And additionally, on Saturday, instead of doing Kenpo, you're actually, you if you follow the schedule, right, you're doing uh, back stuff with plyo, right? So you actually get a double dose twice a week. But plyo side is the core day where they focus on it. And it's actually a more intense version condensed to a shorter time. So I, I found it harder, you know, harder. At first I was like, well, this is shorter, I can keep up. But I really found it hard to keep up. I like that a lot. If you're one of those cardio people who likes to move, you like P90X lean, plyo side's where it's at. It's really fun. Uh, phase two overall, 
just was really nice. It was it was good to have something familiar with extra challenges, right? The whole reason I bought P9XD was to try something new. Phase two was something I was already familiar with. I didn't have to spend a lot of time learning the moves, right? But they were moves I knew, just extra challenges. And, and a lot of them were optional. So you could try different ways. I liked that a lot. I thought that was really cool. It's kind of, phase two, I think, was what I envisioned P9X2 to be, based on what I heard from people. Abrapper X2 is actually easier, I think. I think, I, I to this day, I still cannot finish one, no matter how hard I try. I mean, I can finish it, but I don't do, like, exactly 24 with good form, right? Or, you know, extra and feeling great. Abrapper 2 was where I thought was, like, the perfect level for me, and it was hard enough that I could continually improve, but it wasn't insane like the first one. Um, I know a lot of people have actually, they'll do their exercise in the morning and then they'll wait later in the day or at night to do ab ripper to, you know, not be completely destroyed so they can have some extra energy to focus. And that's cool too. I don't think you'll need to do that with ab ripper too. Um, I like that. The yoga. So this is now my de facto yoga CD. So I know some people had got uh, Fountain of Youth, some of the one-on-ones because the main criticism against yoga was its length, right? Over an hour, hour and a half. And, you know, those of us in a busy day, We've already devoted an hour of our day, which is a lot of time for working professionals with parents, run a business, etc. That the those are other ones for 40 minutes, uh, Fountain of Youth, I can't remember how long that was, the one on ones for about an hour or less. The PNX2 one's an hour and six minutes. If you take out the talking in the beginning and the extra single ohm at the end, it's about an hour. Perfect. And uh, you pretty quickly get that first 20 minutes of really sweating. So if you're like in an uber hurry, you can still do it. So I think that's my de facto yoga CD now. So if I ever find uh, some of the hybrid, hybrid programs where they blend P9X1 with P9X2, uh, yoga, that yoga X2 and P9X2 is where it's at. I love it. I also liked how they had Melissa doing the simple stuff and Ted doing the really, really advanced stuff. That's, uh, it's, it's nice to know what I can shoot for because some of the ones in one I started to master over time, especially during core week when you get to practice multiple times. P9X2, you do it three times a week now. So you get to get really good at some of those moves. Uh, if any of you tried crane and failed in the first one, you get like ample time to practice now. So yeah, I, I really liked that, that yoga a lot, uh, especially for people who don't like yoga. It was intense. It was cool. Not a lot of the strange balance postures. You get a good core workout. It's legit. Uh, the diet guide, so much easier to follow in two. I don't know what it was. It just seemed simpler, smaller, more approachable. The point system, the portion system, it just made sense. I think that was my biggest uh, problem with P9X1 is I was, you know, focused on the fitness and the moves and the forms and the styles and the muscle groups. I didn't really focus much on the diet. I basically just stopped eating crap and called it a day, right? And that's, I think, really helped, you know, prevented me, basically I plateaued because of that. So P9X2, I really wanted to see how far I could really go, right? How, how, how much calorie tracking and stuff like that. And when I opened the diet guide, uh, it just was a lot more approachable. had some options I liked. And um, I actually did the vegan, vegetarian option. I'll explain that in a bit. But they also have a grain-free option. So you can still do that with that. The key is they don't have, like, fast food anymore. They don't have uh, restaurant food anymore. It, it's assumed that you're mature enough now to recognize that those foods are bad and you're serious. You're serious enough to buy a new version of P90X just because you want to see Tony again or try something new. So you're not going to find those options. So it's very strict in terms of they don't have that kind of crap food. But if you're already doing it, it's not a big deal. It's just more recipes and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Um, so the challenges that I had in PNX2 were twofold. Number one, I got the flu, like a bad flu, in the middle of phase two. I think I was two weeks in. I was ready to go. I was starting to see improvements again. You know, I was finally killing pull-ups to do the harder pull-up moves. And I got the flu, and I started recognizing as you know, write it down every day. I recognized the um, the performance negatives, and I said I, I got to stop because if I don't get any better, I'm going to continue to you know not get better. So I had to stop for a week, and it's cool because after I came back, you know, I was healthy again. I started right where I left off, so that was really really cool. Actually, a good time to have the flu in the program. Um, I also had drop foot, so uh, during I think it was week one or two i had a minecraft land party for my uh daughters and nephews and we sat downstairs at this you know wooden table for about four eight hours if you've ever been to land party it's a bunch of kids or adults or whatever who get together and play computer games or xbox games online together for a long time right the goal is just to have fun all day play you know work hard play hard kind of thing and we had a wooden table i sat with my foot underneath my leg my right foot underneath my leg for about four hours I noticed the next day I was tripping a lot because I was packing travel to go to a client in New York. And next thing I know, I couldn't dorsal flex my foot. So I can push it down, but I can't put my right one up. It just wouldn't go up. I 
So I could jump, but I can't you know, land. So if you try to heel walk, not going to happen. So you either A, walk like a zombie where you drag your foot. That's what they call it, drop foot or drag your toe. Or B, you throw it. So I had to throw it. I looked like an idiot walking from uh, Penn Station in New York all the way up to Bryant Park. It was ridiculous. So I had to get an AFO and everything else. So here I am injured without my, my right foot working in the middle, you know, like day, you know, week two of P90X2, right? And uh, if you know anything about Eric Stolkansky from The Broken Lizard, he was in P90X1 ply, uh, plyometrics. He had one leg. I figured if that guy can finish plyometrics and P90X the entire program with one leg, then I can do it with a half working foot. So I was uh, obsessed with not getting injured. So like, for example, the um, when you do lifting on one leg, I had to do it, you know, with w like my right leg and I would trip a lot. So I had to use lighter weights to compensate. So I actually used a ton of core to compensate for that. My, my left leg started to hurt a lot because I had to compensate for the right. Um, if I tripped, I had to fall on purpose so I wouldn't hurt my ankle, right? Because the nerves are a little bit numb there, at least they were. So I was obsessed with not getting injured because I wanted to prove to people that I had a pre-existing injury from video games, not from working out that I managed to compensate through for a very intense workout regime that had nothing to do with it. And I overcame that injury while working out to help make my leg get better. And I felt like after the end of every workout that I actually had a little bit more feeling in my leg. And if you know anything about nerve injuries, they heal extremely slowly. Muscle, tendons, blood vessels, flesh wounds, whatever, right? They heal faster than nerves. Nerves to grow like a millimeter or some insanely small partial amount a day. So it was uh, really frustrating, but I, powered through you know eric was my inspiration and uh i think the the week after pnax i got 80 percent of my mobility back <laughs> so like right when i'm done i can use my foot again i'm so frustrated because pap lower with one foot like it's still you know that's something you want both legs for you know so anyway that was um that was a very hard thing another thing i tried was vegetarian or vegan so really the difference is vegetarian no meat no eggs no dairy right uh, vegan, same thing, but it's a lifestyle, right? So anyway, I went vegan, whatever that is. And it had nothing to do with ethical and moral issues of animal treatment. It was strictly just, uh, some in the book, I think Melissa, who cooks all of Tony Horton's food, wrote, even if it's not your thing, hey, something you know, something new to try. And I'm like, that just struck a chord with me. And then it seemed very hard when I started looking at all the foods I couldn't have. And I'm like, this looks hard. I want to try this. And then, um, you know, had the grain-free option, I'm like, maybe I could combine the two. So I quickly found that grain-free plus vegan is impossible if you're not, like, reasonably intelligent about nutrition, which I'm not. So I just stuck with the vegetarian after about the first week, and I learned so much about foods and everything else. Um, I On some days, I felt amazing. I felt very light. Other days, I was extremely high, tired, exhausted, dizzy. I didn't read beyond the first two sentences. <laughs> so it clearly states in the book, take supplements because you will not get you know, iron, B12, all these things from foods. You need to take pills, supplements to compensate for your body's lack of nutrition if you're going to abandon meat, dairy, milk, and all those other, you know, natural ways of getting those nutrients and vitamins. And I'm, so I, I quickly had a nutritionist friend explain to me all the things I had to take. I verified it online and I felt a little bit better. But it's after about two weeks of going back to milk, a little bit of, um, you know, chicken, fish, it's just night and day different. So I'm glad I did it, but it's, it's something that you have to be very careful about from a nutritional perspective. You definitely need to follow the, <laughs> read the book <laughs> instead of reading a sentence like I did. Um, and, uh, you know, there's so many wonderful things. I mean, I learned so much about what foods I couldn't eat, what foods have what, uh, what foods are really actually plant-based, which are not, which foods, um, you know, have protein supplements. The biggest challenge from vegetarians is getting protein. You know, tempa, soy nuts, um, shakes, uh, quinoa, like all that stuff. It was just... You know, I learned a lot of things. And so if you're looking, you know, why would you ever do something so crazy like that? There's three reasons. Number one, if you want to lose weight, vegans do not get fat. If they do, they're doing something weird or they have genetics, right? Most of them do not. So I lost, that's how I broke my plateau. I went from like, I think I lost 13 pounds in total from Pinatics 1 about a year. And most people go, well, you're a small guy, but I would have expected better. I love beer. So I'll leave it at that. But bottom line is I lost you know, 13 pounds, but I kind of plateaued, right? I really wanted to get below that 11% body fat. I wanted to get the 9, 8, whatever else. Uh, for my weight and age, my plateau, I think, is 151 pounds. So I, I think that's you get below that, you start having organ damage or something. So I was at about, uh, no, I'm sorry, it's 131, right? 
So I was about 155 when I started PNX2, and I was like, I want to really get down. I got down at one point to 137, so I was very impressed with that. Um, I had to basically count calories, um, so I had to have 1,700 per day, no more. That includes the evening beer and or wine, right? So I had to factor that in. So sometimes I actually couldn't have a shake because I wanted a beer that night, right? And you can say what you want, but if stress and sleep are the number one contributors to, you know, like lack of stress and good sleep are more important than that extra protein shake. So, you know, lesser do evil. So I, I got that, you know, I lost an extra 15 pounds from that. It's, a, it's 28 pounds total from PNAX uh, one and two over a year. So that's one reason. If you want to lose weight, vegetarian is the way to go, like guaranteed. You start doing PNAX with that, you're going to shed a ton, especially the body fat. Uh, number two, if you don't like vegetables at all, and you're like, dude, the biggest problem with eating healthy is, you know, I don't mind avoiding processed food, but vegetables suck. Go vegetarian. <laughs> After two months of that, you will like freak out if you don't have something green on your plate. You're like, this is uncomfortable. Can I just throw some kale randomly on it? Like that's that's a great way to bootstrap, you know, cold turkey to get your get your uh, diet changed. And uh, number three, you learn a lot. You get to try new foods. Like a, again, the whole point of trying a bunch of foods is to find, you know, out of thirty foods, two you like right? It's not to try 30 foods and go, I hate all of these. That's okay. Keep trying until you find something you like. I now love quinoa. It's a great substitute for pasta and rice, brown rice, which I used to have a lot for the carb heavy diets. Now I have quinoa and it's, you know, chock full of protein. Um, there's some debate on how much, you know, I'm cooked, but bottom line, there's a lot of protein there and it's not soy based and not gluten based. Who's up? Uh, number two, you know, tempa. Um, currently I'm doing body beef, so I can't really do a lot of soy, but Tempa has an insane amounts of soy, right? And it's pasteurized. It's actually not like that crap tofu which is processed. So yeah, there's a lot of wonderful food choices. So I highly recommend it for those three reasons. Guarantee losing weight. Uh, force yourself to find a love of vegetables, you know, or you can actually, you know, put it with other stuff, right? You don't have to eat it raw. And number three, it's just a great way to try new things. Um, additional note on supplements. If you are someone who's in office space, me, I'm a programmer. You also want to look into vitamin D, especially if you go to the vegetarian option, just because, you know, I never go outside. I'm always in this room coding, you know, all day. Uh, during the summer, you know, I, I might go out some more, so it's not a problem. But during the winter months and spring when it's cold, I sit in the house and code. Vegetarian, that was very bad. I actually had a vitamin D deficiency big time, and that can lead to some really strange health effects. So just be aware if you're going to abandon milk and everything else and go, you know, get away from dairy, you got to find get your vitamin D from somewhere. As a vegetarian, it's hard to do without supplements, right? So just be aware of that. Uh, the, the big downside, I do this last, the downside to doing vegetarian or vegan was the vegan smell, okay? So that's what my, Her Majesty called it, my wife. She said that I smell like vegetables. So we tried, like when I was around 19 or something, I'm 34 now, when I was 19, I used to smoke. And I couldn't kiss her unless I, you know, wash my mouth out and brush my teeth, right? She hated, you know, smoke breath and smoking, right? She was part of the reason I quit smoking because I could never, like, kiss her because she'd constantly, like, go brush teeth. I'm like, but it's the moment. You're killing the moment, <laughs> right? So now it's like, you can't kiss me. You smell like vegetables. <laughs> so that was another problem with vegetarian is it really had something strange with the relationship because, you know, she wouldn't eat a lot of the vegetarian stuff that I did. I'm the one who cooks. So that's just something to be aware of. If, um, maybe, maybe you know, everyone's phys physiology is different and certain foods make you smell differently based on certain chemicals you have. Right. For me, whatever reason, having kale and vegetables, you know, like at least twice a day without, you know, some of the carb stuff, like fruit and stuff, they it definitely came out and smell it. Um, so, yeah. So, again, my secret to massive weight loss in PNX2 was the calorie restriction. So PNX2 is already intense as it is, but taking 500 calories a day based on my current weight and ratio and everything else amounts to about 1700 calories a day. And I, I have a spreadsheet I, I linked into the uh, YouTube description you can see where I tracked, you know, the meals, the calories, how much generally things, you know, were about. And, you know, with vegetables, you can round because they don't really have a lot of calories anyway, but they're chock full of nutrients. So, you know, it's good. Um, so, yeah, it was very interesting to learn about balancing macronutrients and everything else. You really have to be one of those people who's organized and, and likes data and everything else. It was fun to do for, you know, about two or three weeks after that. I, it's very clear I am not that kind of person. I think uh, if you follow Tony Horton at all, he has a SoundCloud account where he gives about a minute, you know, speech about something or just a rant. And the calorie counting was one. I'm like, he's not the kind of guy that does it. He just, you know, focuses on eating good foods, whole foods, and calls it a day and you'll be fine. I agree. I, it was fun to do the calorie counting and it really did get me below the fat content. While drinking beer, I still got, you know, down. Considering I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm over 26, it's pretty good, right? Especially considering my genetics. Um, 
because I was when I before I started PNX, I was one percent away from being overweight, right? I was twenty eight percent body fat. Now you know, then I got down about nine to eight, and a good you know final portions of PNX too. So it's pretty impressive. Um, so yeah, calorie restriction and macronutrients, I learned a lot. Um, I always thought there was a way you could work out and stuff. I never really realized it all comes down to how many calories you eat per day. So it was fun to do with the Opinion X2 diet guide as well as track my own calories. I learned a lot, you know, doing that. The foam roller. So the new toy, main toy for Opinion X2 is the foam roller. There's two things they don't tell you I think it's important to know. Number one, you do not start with the rumble roller unless you're a badass. You can definitely start with the old one and get a lot of benefit. The smooth one that has no real ridges, right? Not just a regular foam roller. Um, additionally, that thing is really good for your neck. So, you know, they, they don't really do actually many neck exercises. I think they do some of the delt stuff and the lats, but they don't really do neck. Uh, for those of you who have neck issues, you know, like me, who I sit all day like this, you know, that, that really helped. Um, number two is the, you know, rumble roll and foam roll. You can actually use both. Some days you're so sore, you actually just want to go back to the foam roll. That's fine. So other days you need the foam roller. The rumble roller is something you graduate to. It's not something you can start with. But if you know you're badass, you can do that. So yeah, it's uh, it was pretty amazing to see my before and after pictures. Not just from from me and how much weight I lost. I was really surprised how much weight I actually lost in phase two. Part of that was being lazy around Christmas. But mostly um, just my face from a year ago. I see older pictures from me from 2011 and 2012. It's mind boggling how much my face is just drained of stuff, of fat. It's it's crazy. So yeah, I think PNAX2 really helped with the diet guide and just the focused, um, you know, the, the, the long-term intensity, right? I already had strength. I already graduated. I was ready for a new challenge. And I think PNAX2 really, you know, did that. Pap lower, again, if I could just do pap lower, upper and lower every other day <laughs> with the yoga for recovery week, that would be it. Um, so yeah, what's next? Body beast. So now that I've lost all this weight, I've found how low I can go. I'm trying to get it all back. But instead of get fat and getting fat back, I'm trying to get back with uh, muscle mass. So yeah, Body Beast is next. And uh, I'll let y'all guys know how I get on with that. So again, p 2 definitely, definitely cool. Worth checking out. Um, if you're worried about the lifting, just do what I did. Compensate with heavier weights. Short, you know, I mean, you're doing less reps. You might as well, it's okay if you fail. Just try it. Uh, be aware that some of the pull-ups you may not be able to do if you were struggling in round one. Don't, don't be afraid to buy the adjuster thing or use the chair like I did. And uh, yeah, definitely recommend it. It was fun.